we welcome you to this special broadcast for parents and leaders of children and youth. I am Elder Quentin L. Cook, and I'm joined by my quorum president, M. Russell Ballard, acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. We are excited to be with you today to share ideas about helping the youth and children of the church come unto Christ through the Children and Youth Program. We've asked Olivia, first counselor in her young woman class presidency, to offer an opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful here to be here today to hear the apostles and the things that they have to say. And please help us to feel the spirit and to know that the things are true. And we're grateful for our Savior and for all that he does for us. And please help us to do as he would. And we're thankful for all of our blessings and for the blessing of technology that we are able to do this today. And um, please help us to uh, do as he would throughout our day and to uh, imply this to our lives. And we're grateful for the opportunity to be here in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Olivia. Brothers and sisters, as you know, the Lord has a special place in his heart for the rising generation. He has inspired his prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, to speak directly to them several times in recent years, inviting them to participate in the gathering of Israel and the work of salvation and exaltation. Let's begin our discussion by listening to a few of those messages to the children and the youth. My dear young brothers and sisters, these surely are the latter days, and the Lord is hastening his work to gather Israel. That gathering is the most important thing taking place on earth today. Nothing else compares in magnitude, nothing else compares in importance, nothing else compares in majesty. And if you choose to, if you want to, you can be a big part of it. So now I am inviting every young woman and every young man between the ages of 12 and 18 in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to enlist in the youth battalion of the Lord to help gather Israel. Last year, I invited the youth of the church to become part of the greatest cause on earth, to join the Lord's battalion and help gather Israel. And children, I extend that same invitation to each of you. My young friends, you are the hope of Israel. You have a divine destiny. Your future is bright and becoming brighter each day. I have complete confidence in you. And I promise that if you will be prayerful about helping to gather Israel, the Lord will inspire you. He will lead you to people who are willing to let God prevail in their lives, whom you are uniquely prepared to help. He will strengthen you to meet your own challenges and fill your life with joy. Now you might think that because you are young, you cannot do great things. Maybe you think that Heavenly Father's work is only for adults, but I want you to know that Heavenly Father sees things differently than we do. The Lord can use you, yes, each of you, to do His amazing and important work. Many of you are already doing good things to help gather Israel. Keep going. You, if you have not yet become part of this great cause, Start today. I love you and pray for you. And I testify that the Lord knows you by name and sees who you can become. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Elder Cook, what thoughts do you have for parents and leaders about the prophet's words to the rising generation? Those are powerful invitations. I think they demonstrate the great confidence Jesus Christ has in this generation of youth and children. And I think it's so appropriate 
that the children and youth program was introduced at a time when the Lord is inviting young people to become ever more engaged in the gathering of Israel and the work of salvation and exaltation. Now, some young people might be thinking, gathering Israel, the work of salvation and exaltation, that sounds a bit overwhelming. President Ballard, what would you say to help them fill up to that challenge? Well, I think President Nelson said it. Anytime you do anything that helps anyone on e either side of the veil, takes a step towards making covenants with God and receiving their essential baptismal and temple ordinances, you are helping to gather Israel. I believe the Children and Youth Program provides plentiful opportunities to do just that through gospel learning, service, and activities, and personal development. Children and youth help themselves and others take those steps towards making and keeping covenants. They're participating in the gathering of Israel. And as their parents and leaders, you are playing a vital role. Even in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, you have taught the gospel in your homes and through technology. You have found inspired ways to help children and youth participate in virtual or socially distant service and activities. And you have ministered to the children and youth, inspiring them to set goals to grow more like Christ during this unique time. Now we know it hasn't always been easy, and many of you still have questions. Today, we hope to provide a little help. Specifically, we'd like to show how children and youth program can be a resource to help the rising generation become bound to the Savior. So to start, we've compiled a few short video clips as a reminder of the basics of the Children and Youth Program. The Children and Youth Program of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is exciting and unique. It invites you to participate fully in the work of salvation and exaltation. Let me first begin with the vision of the program, which is, to strengthen the rising generation's faith in Jesus Christ and help children, youth, and their families progress along the covenant path as they meet life's challenges. May I share a scripture that will help? It is one of the few scriptures we have that give insight about the Savior when He was your age. It is recorded in Luke 2 and 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. This program is designed to help you become more like our Savior in four areas, spiritual, social, physical, and intellectual. And when you go forward on this path, I urge you not to focus so much on the tasks that you're completing, but your longer term goal is what you are becoming. The significant difference from this, the past programs to now, is that you will have an opportunity through personal revelation to choose what you need to do in your life to better follow the Savior. Now, we're going to review how spiritual, social, physical, and intellectual growth is nurtured through gospel learning, service and activities, and personal development. Each of these are intended to help children and youth strengthen their faith in Jesus Christ. The First Presidency, the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, the General Authorities, the General Officers invite you to help the children and youth to get the gospel from their minds down deeply into their hearts. 
That's a pretty good summary. I think the clear message is that our central focus in this program and everything we do is to build faith in Jesus Christ and become more like Him. Yes, and I love the point that was made about personal revelation being one of the key differences in this program to help us do that. If we can help our children and youth turn to heaven, they will have the guidance they need to move forward throughout their lives. And as we turn to heaven as parents and leaders, we will know how to adapt this program to each individual's ability and circumstances. Now the rest of this broadcast will include four segments led by our organizational general presidents. One each for parents, primary leaders, adult youth leaders, and quorum and class presidencies. These segments are also available separately, so you can use them in training, councils, or other meetings. After each audience is addressed, President Ballard and I will give some concluding remarks. We will begin with a conversation for parents, led by President Jean B. Bingham, the Leaf Society General President, and President Mark L. Pace, Sunday School General President. This program was just a perfect timing along with the Come Follow Me program of the church. The Lord really knows what is the perfect program for, for the family and how to help our children immerse in the gospel. So this program now is an initiative of the church wherein our children should first be taught in our homes and then followed by what they learn in the church. So it's really a home-centered and church-supported program. I had been wondering how to help my children build their testimonies and I felt like this was an answer. One of the things that we like to do as a family is to sit down and converse about the things that we need to improve and change. Cada uno tiene sus atributos, cada uno tiene sus formas de dar, ¿no? Y tanto el... A mí lo que me encanta es que se pueda unificar en el hogar con la, con la iglesia y el seminario. Los jóvenes, las crianças precisan mucho del auxilio de los padres. Tienen que estar incentivando y enseñar la importancia de eso. Cuando you begin to see the trust the leaders have for them, they will be willing to um, do more and be able to show that every father loves them and cares for them. Are they learning how to ask? Do they know how the Spirit speaks to them? It's, it's constantly moving, we hope, in an upward direction, building one experience upon another. You know, this is the pattern of heaven. This is the celestial pattern of learning, and this is meant to help you figure out how that works. I mean, you want your children to develop their talents and to try new things to see what those talents are. You also want them to be able to listen to the guidance of the Holy Ghost. That's how we learn about ourselves and how we can learn about our divine identity or who we, who we really are, is by, by listening and an act according to what the Holy Ghost brings to our minds. Well, now a word to the parents. Your role is essential. Please build strong relationships with your children and youth. Leaders at church can help, but these are your children. No one can have a greater influence on their success than you. Give them love, encouragement, and counsel. Parents, as you saw in that video, you are critical in helping your children and youth build faith in Jesus Christ and become more like Him. As a parent and grandparent myself, I am grateful that the Lord inspired home-centered programs like children and youth right when we needed them. I agree, President Bingham. As things begin to return to normal in some parts of the world, we hope your home-centered efforts will continue. Your children's experiences with the gospel in your homes will prepare them for the future better than anything else. Today, we want to share a few ideas and resources that can help you support your children in following Jesus Christ. Of course, these are just suggestions. You know your children best, and together, you and your children can receive revelation on what they need most. Now, the work of helping your children follow the Savior is part of every aspect of life. 
The Children and Youth Program helps us focus on a few key areas where we can offer support, gospel learning, service and activities, and personal development. We'll spend a little time talking about each one. To begin, let's start with gospel learning. I think this past year and a half has shown us how powerful home-centered gospel learning can be, and at times, how challenging it can be. Here are a few ideas of things you can do right now. Keep gathering your family for gospel study regularly. The scripture should be your main resource. Come Follow Me can help make the most of your scripture study and other resources like church magazines, the Gospel Living app, and the Gospel for Kids app, which is available in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, can also help. Many of you are already studying the gospel as a family. Keep going. Even when it seems no one is listening or children complain or argue and it feels more like a war zone than a place of peace and learning, keep going. Your children are listening and watching and the peace and blessings will come. The main thing is that you keep trying. Reading the scripture daily with my own children was not always easy and sometimes we wondered if it was worth it. But years later, it was clear that it did make a difference. One of our daughters was asked to speak in state conference just before she left for her mission. We were quite surprised but grateful to hear her say, I learned the gospel in our daily family scripture study. I may have acted less than enthusiastic sometimes, but those short reading and discussion times taught me principles of the gospel, which gave me a foundation for making righteous choices that have brought me where I am today. Also, Gospel learning doesn't always have to be formal sit-down lessons. Everyday life provides many opportunities for informal teaching moments. Whether it's spilt milk or an act of kindness, help your children apply the Savior's atonement and gospel to their experiences at home, school, and work, or in other activities. They will also find answers to life's questions and great power in studying the Word of God personally especially as they read the Book of Mormon. Help them make this a priority in their lives. And finally, support your children in attending church classes, including seminary and in fulfilling church callings. Some will have opportunities to serve in a class or quorum presidency. If they do, help them be aware of the many resources available to them on the Children and Youth website and the Gospel Library app. Now next is service and activities. Sometimes we think of service and activities as something that only happens at church, but the most impactful activities are often family-based. Don't wait for your ward to plan something. You know what will bless your children and draw them closer to the Savior. And family activities don't have to be large scale or elaborate. The important thing is that you're building strong relationships with each other and with the Savior. Consider involving your children in the planning process. If you need ideas, you can find some on the Children and Youth website and in some areas on JustServe.org or in the JustServe app. Here's one example of that. We heard about a young man whose birthday was coming up. Instead of a traditional birthday party, he wanted to invite his friends to do a service project. His parents helped him find the right project on JustServe. On the day of his party, this young man, his friends, and his family had a great time putting together hygiene kits and eating pizza. The final aspect of the Children and Youth Program is personal development. Based on Luke chapter 2, verse 52, youth and children set goals to increase and grow as the Savior did, spiritually, physically, socially, and intellectually. But it is also important to remember that personal development is more than just youth and children setting goals to fulfill a requirement. It is the process of them seeking revelation and striving to become more like the Savior in all parts of their lives. Revelation is key to this process of growth. President Nelson said, quote, I promise you that if you will sincerely and persistently do the spiritual work needed to develop the crucial spiritual skill of learning how to hear the whisperings of the Holy Ghost, you will have all the direction you will ever need in your life. I encourage you parents to help your children recognize the unique ways the Holy Ghost speaks to them. Most often revelation comes through inspiring thoughts to our minds and peaceful feelings to our hearts. The impressions we receive may be small, 
but they are more likely to come when we are making the daily effort to seek the Lord in prayer and scripture study. I've noticed that strong impressions don't always come before I make a decision, but often they come after. Sometimes the Lord expects us to act in faith first, and he confirms our decisions afterwards. I'd encourage your children to act and press forward. The crucial skill of hearing the Spirit will help them have confidence that they are becoming who the Lord wants them to become. That confidence can only come if these are your children's goals and not your goals. Your children will need a guiding hand and support, but allow them the agency to improve, learn, and grow in ways that they feel are best. When it is something they choose, they will be more motivated to do it. Then support and cheer them on. Let's watch a short video showing how families are working on personal development together. People are super busy. So it was kind of a tricky transition to get to the point where it's like, oh, okay, what are we supposed to do here? How can we make this happen? What do we need to do? But once we started figuring it out and realizing it was simpler than we were worrying that it should be, things went a lot better. Siempre que vamos a hacer algo, lo primero es orar y hablar con Dios para ver qué es lo que Él quiere que nosotros cambiemos, verdaderamente como familia. So when I had this prayer in my heart of what can I do, and I and I asked, I just got that prompting and literally the vision board in my head, this will work. So I would say, you know, have that prayer in your heart, search and look, and then take it to the Lord and see what personal revelation comes to you and your family because there's a way for everyone to do this program. It'll look a little bit different for everyone and that's okay because we're all just trying to make our way back to Christ. For us as parents, we need to support them 100%. So maybe this is the best time for me to awaken myself and do it with her so that uh, uh, she, she would be aware that she is doing it not only by herself, but she has a parent supporting her all, all the way. It's important for me to listen and to communicate regularly, trying to remember what's important to them and what they want to improve upon helps me focus on what questions I'm asking them more and you're learning to listen to them and, and you get to know them and how they learn and how they grow and what they need and what motivates them. So this new initiative is teaching kids how to act for themselves and proactively move towards what's important to them and what's important to Heavenly Father. And so this is what we're trying to help our kids do is become more self-directed, more connected to Him so that they're making the right kinds of decisions for, for their lives. That video had some great ideas. President Bingham, what are their ideas can we give parents? Well, it may be helpful to meet with each of your children and discuss how they want to grow and what goals they want to work on. For some, their goal may be to continue or improve in something they're already doing. That's great. So many children and youth are already working on wonderful things. Just help them recognize and involve the Lord in that growth process. Now, your children may need a little guidance in making specific attainable goals. You might need to help them make a plan. Your children are much more likely to be successful if they write their goals down. The guidebooks or the Gospel Living app can help. I heard a parent in the video say that their family follows up with each other. That's a great way to support your children in their goals. This will provide some accountability and help them know you are there to help. Some families also set goals to work on together. What a fun way to work and grow together as a family. In conclusion, we just want to extend a huge thank you to all you wonderful parents. You're doing a great job. We trust that these ideas will be helpful to you and your children as you follow the Savior together. Thank you again, and may the Lord continue to bless you. In our next segment, President Camille N. Johnson, Primary General President, will lead a similar discussion for primary leaders. I love the Savior because he loves me. When I'm mad or sad, he helps me feel better. He loves each one of us, even if we're different. If I saw Jesus, the first thing I'll do is say thank you for all the wonderful things you gave us. He sacrificed himself for all of us. 
I feel my Savior's love when I take the sacrament. The Savior is very important because he comforts me and he makes me really happy. From Jesus I learn not to be rude or mean. When I hear songs or think about Jesus, I feel happy and warm inside. I want to follow Jesus because he is the perfect example. Even though I can't see my Savior, I still know that he's real. I know that he really cares about people. The peace of my Savior's love at home helps us so much through these crazy times. If I knew Jesus was coming to my house tomorrow, then I would ask him if I could feel the nail prints in his hands because he died for me. I feel my Savior's love. love he gives me. Hello, primary leaders. I am delighted to be with you today. I believe you have the best callings in the church. Is there anything better than being with these precious and capable children? They are so full of hope and light and so eager to learn and grow. You have been called and set apart to help these wonderful children build their faith in the Savior and learn to follow Him. Today, I offer a few suggestions to help them build their faith in Jesus Christ and recognize the Spirit. But I want to remind you that the Lord invites each of you to receive personal revelation on how you can serve in your primary calling. I hope you'll listen for those impressions today. As you follow them and counsel together as leaders and teachers, the Lord will guide you to meet the needs of the children you serve. Brothers and sisters, the Children and Youth Program points our children to heaven. Children and youth are invited to engage with heaven and seek personal revelation about how they can become more like the Savior. The Lord trusts them to do so. This inspired program encourages children and youth to involve the Lord in their daily efforts, whether they be spiritual, social, physical, or intellectual. Our job is to support them through gospel learning, service and activities, and personal development. So let's talk about each of these elements of children and youth and what role primary leaders play, beginning with gospel learning. The positive experiences children have learning about the Savior in Sunday classes and singing time can bless them for a lifetime. Teachers, we are so grateful for your efforts. And gospel learning does not just happen in person on Sunday. For the past year or more, primary gatherings have been limited. And in some places, that's still the case. Yet your creativity and inspiration have been on full display. Notes, gifts, phone calls, Zoom calls, window visits, care packages, drive-by visits, and even parades have been part of your offering. I know of one primary presidency who delivered some chalk to each child's home and encouraged the children to draw a picture of their favorite scripture story on the sidewalk. This past year has taught us that there are many ways to teach about the Savior and minister to children outside of our formal Sunday classes. And as we come out of the pandemic, we hope you primary leaders will continue to seek inspiration and find creative ways to help children feel the Savior's love and learn his gospel. Another thing we hope you do is help these tender children learn to recognize the Holy Ghost. Children feel his influence. Brothers and sisters, are you pointing it out? Are you helping these dear children recognize the warm, comforting, sure manifestations of the Spirit? Learning to receive and recognize personal revelation is key to the children and youth program. It is key to the personal conversion of our primary children, and it is key to staying on the covenant path. These children need to know how to engage heaven and recognize when it's happening. I want to share an experience I had in primary singing time just a few weeks ago. The music leader was teaching the children a song. Then she paused and testified to the children about a truth in the song. The room was filled with reverent silence as the children pondered what she said. 
the presence of the spirit was apparent. And then the music leader said something like, I can feel the Holy Ghost right now, and you may be feeling it too. I witnessed as this sweet leader helped the children recognize that what they were feeling was the Holy Ghost testifying to them about the truth in the song. Brothers and sisters, please help the children you serve feel and recognize the Holy Ghost. President Nelson has told our rising generation, you can learn for yourself right now at your age how to receive personal revelation and nothing will make a bigger difference in your life than that. And I know nothing will. Help the children develop this one skill and they will be able to receive heaven's help as they strive to make choices to stay on the covenant path. Another way primary leaders can help children draw closer to Jesus Christ is through service and activities. We have a short video that demonstrates this. Todos los meses realizamos actividades eh, del nuevo programa. Y estamos haciendo pan para la Santa Cena. Para mí es importante porque, porque eso representa el cuerpo de Jesús. We are having a primary activity. We are trying to exercise. We do social, intellectual, and physical. We also learn more about Jesus Christ. Sister Gutierrez is going to show you how to make a huge poster called a vision board. Like physical, I want to eat healthier. I want to learn more about my family history. The puppet balloons and memorize articles of faith. It makes me happy and makes me closer to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. We're fine to raise for physical goals. You look at the word, then you act it out, and someone's trying to guess what it is. We're doing articles of faith, Jeopardy. I like it because we get to get together and have fun. We are primary! I loved hearing that little girl say, it makes me happy and makes me closer to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. It's wonderful to see how children are building their faith together through service and activities. Activity leaders, I hope you never doubt how important your calling is. Service and activities provide critical opportunities for children to build relationships and feel the spirit. Where it's safe and authorized, start holding in-person activities at least monthly. If it's feasible to do them more frequently, even better. If it's not safe to meet in person, please consider activities you can do with children virtually or that you can provide them to do individually at home. Look for ways you can keep them serving and learning. Minister. This will show the children that you love and support them. I also suggest finding out from the children and their parents what activities will benefit them. If you need more ideas, the Children and Youth website is a wonderful resource. The third way primary leaders support children is through personal development. In the year a child turns eight, encourage him or her to prayerfully and with the help of the Spirit, set and work on goals in the four areas we learn about in Luke chapter two, verse 52. This will happen mostly at home, but your role as a leader is still very important. In addition to encouraging goals, you can support each child's growth in every lesson, singing time and activity and throughout the other parts of their lives. Here are some ways you can help. Look for opportunities to point out how children are becoming more like Jesus Christ, spiritually, intellectually, physically, and socially. Find ways to encourage them to work on their goals. That doesn't mean you should track personal goals, but you can encourage effort and progress. Offer support as needed. You may also consider setting a group or class goal. Get to know and love each child individually. Talk with them and their parents about ways you can help them in their development. Brothers and sisters, please give special attention to those without support at home. Primary leaders, we are so grateful for all you do to serve the children of the church. 
We know that you are guided by the Lord as you strive to help these children follow the covenant path and bind themselves to the Savior. We hope that you will prayerfully help the children to whom you have been called to minister, use the children and youth program, and recognize the Spirit in their lives. It is their tool for accomplishing the work of salvation and exaltation. May the Lord bless you in your efforts. Next, President Bonnie H. Corden, our Young Women General President, and President Stephen J. Lund, Young Men General President, will share some ideas for adult leaders of youth. To our wonderful leaders and teachers of children and youth, we need to let the young people lead particularly those who have been called and set apart to serve in class and quorum presidencies. Priesthood authority will have been delegated to them. They will learn how to receive inspiration in leading their class or quorum. As you know, President Nelson says, let the young people lead. Leaders, we hope that you will mentor, guide and support the youth as they do this. My role is definitely as a young woman's president to allow them the opportunity to lead out. We're basically there to support them on the back end and let them grow and flourish in the way that they need. Primary young women and young men leaders and teachers, your support is vital. Some youth and children may not have the direct support of parents and families. They'll need the extra care and attention from their church leaders that you can provide. Leaders, every parent loves their child and wants what is best for them. Talk to them and ask them about their hopes and dreams for their child and how you can help. When the youth begin to see the trust the leaders have for them, they'll be willing to um, do more and be able to show that Heavenly Father loves them and cares for them. Parents and youth and youth leaders, please help our youth. Please connect them with heaven. Help and encourage them to follow and keep those things which they should do. Encourage and help them, but let them lead. We are so grateful for the opportunity to speak to you, adult youth leaders today. This includes ward young women presidencies, bishoprics, advisors, and specialists, as well as stake leaders. Can you feel the sense of urgency surrounding this work? Every time I hear our prophets and apostles speak about the rising generation, I get a sense of optimism and enthusiasm. Take, for instance, these words from President Nelson. My beloved younger brothers and sisters, you are among the best the Lord has ever sent to this world. You have the capacity to be smarter and wiser and have more impact on the world than any previous generation. Now, he did not say that our youth are smarter and wiser and, and have more impact than the previous generation, but they have the capacity to be so. So how do we help them reach their potential? How do we strengthen their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? That's the sacred call we have as their adult leaders and advisors. You know, so much has been entrusted to the youngest leaders of the church the class and quorum presidencies, they, they aren't just the future leaders of the church, they are leaders right now. Our prophets and the apostles know that they can do it. The Savior knows that they can do it. And we know that they can do it because they have you to mentor them and to guide them. And so we want to begin by discussing your responsibility to support class and quorum presidencies. We'll save most of the specifics about the children and youth program for our discussion with those presidencies. And we hope that you'll listen in when that time comes. But your task is not to help the program succeed. Your task is actually to help these young leaders succeed. And if they succeed, then the program succeeds and you'll succeed too. As adult leaders, you help the youth focus on the Savior. And one of the ways you do this is by mentoring and preparing the Quorum of Class Presidencies. Have you ever thought of these young leaders as a resource to help the youth, their peers, come unto Christ, they are capable and eager to engage in this work. They are called and set apart to lead by revelation. The Lord trusts them and so can we. 
In other words, we need to let the presidencies lead, even if it might seem easier to you to plan and make the decisions or even carry things out just on your own. Sometimes it might seem easier to just ask the quorum and class presidencies to bring the refreshments while you handle the logistics. But that's not what the Lord called these young leaders to do. We often have adult-led programs with youth involvement. With this cultural shift, we hope we have a youth-led program with much adult support. Now's the perfect time to let them learn when they are surrounded by parents and leaders who can help them succeed. Every skill they learn will bless them and will bless the work now and the Lord's kingdom for years to come. So maybe instead of saying, let the youth lead, we might say, teach the youth to lead. We don't take over for them. They are the leaders in a quorum or class. We also don't disengage and leave them helpless and unprepared. Remember that these youth may not have had many opportunities to lead in the past. Make it your priority to teach the youth how to lead and to be there to support and help and guide them. Let's watch a short video that illustrates what we've been talking about. We recognized in these young deacons the potential spoken of by President Nelson, but we also recognized that they had zero experience. They'd never led. And so we set out to teach them how to lead and really um, elevate them in a few key places uh, or situations, uh, namely the presidency meeting, quorum meeting, and uh, kind of planning and carrying out activities. We, we'd just pull them aside beforehand and we'd say, hey, we're, we're not in charge here. Um, you hold the keys and this is your quorum and we are behind you 100%. If you have any questions during the meeting, look to us, we'll support you, but we're not gonna make decisions for you. And uh, by the way, this is how, you know, you might wanna consider conducting a meeting. Here are some things to consider. Uh, you know, we pointed them to some of the resources that are available, whether they're sample agendas for a presidency meeting or in Come Follow Me, the Council Together section. And, you know, it took us a few months and like I said, some, some bumps and bruises along the way, but, but a few months in, we were just cheerleaders. We were there to give them a little guidance, keep them on track, but for the most part, they were planning activities. They were doing it all. They were t owning this quorum experience that uh, they'd been called and set apart to do. We've obviously got a lot to learn, but it's been fun to see these boys succeed. They just need a little guidance and opportunities. So here are a few things that you can do right now to help presidencies in your quorum or class. Well, first, help them understand that our Savior Jesus Christ is the center of all we do. As a disciple of Christ, we can help those we serve draw closer to Him and strengthen their faith and progress along the path to eternal life. Help them to never lose sight of this purpose. Next, invite them to get to know the people they serve in their class and their quorum, to pray for them, and minister to them, teach them to seek and trust revelation from the Spirit as they counsel together and support them as they act on those promptings. Prepare them to conduct and lead out in presidency meetings, Sunday lessons and activities. Meet with them beforehand and teach them how. There are resources on the Children and Youth website that can help you teach them how to lead out, including leadership lessons, a sample agenda, and planning documents. It's also helpful to give them regular reminders of upcoming responsibilities, encourage delegation, and offer assistance. A simple phone call or text message can go a long way. Help them to have successful experiences as leaders. And finally, praise them for the good things that they do. Be specific. This will help them to feel valued and encourage them to keep trying. It is so inspiring to watch our youth embrace the opportunity to lead. I recently heard about a class presidency member who referred to her young women in her class as my girls. She recognized her responsibility as a leader and loved and cared for them. I just love that. I heard a similar story about a young quorum leader who drove past a young man in his quorum who was walking down the street. And he remembered what they had been talking about in their presidency meetings in his quorum and decided that he would stop and talk to him instead of just letting him walk by. It turned out, he said, to be a very important conversation. 
such little things like that can happen when we help young people to feel the spirit of their callings. As you fulfill this important role of mentoring quorum and class presidencies, we hope you see children and youth program as a helpful tool. We'll give you a couple of quick ideas for helping youth engage, but we will share more specifics about the program when we address the quorum and class presidencies. So as a reminder, this program is the combination of gospel learning, service and activities and personal development. So gospel learning includes instruction in Sunday meetings. It encourages the youth to make teaching assignments during their presidency meetings. Often lessons will be taught by an adult leader and a youth together, but this will depend on the needs of the class or quorum and the capacity of the youth to teach. And don't forget to encourage seminary. Service and activities can give youth a sense of belonging with fellow followers of Jesus Christ and provide opportunities to learn skills, feel the spirit and have fun. Teach presidencies how to plan and implement activities based on the needs of the youth. Encourage them to consider activities and service in four areas we learn about in Luke 2, 52. This will help them accomplish the great work taught by our prophet. There are activity planning resources available on Children and Youth website under the Quorum and Class Presidency resources. When they are holding and planning their meetings, be a resource to assist and provide guidance, but let the presidency make the decisions. And personal development is an invitation for youth to grow as the Savior did, growing spiritually, intellectually, physically, and socially. Reach out and counsel with parents about their children's needs and the ways that you might offer support. This is a good way to get to know them and to show your love. While it is not your job to track goals, and a few goals might be too personal for them to share, you should be a constant cheerleader in support. Ask them what goals that they have that you might be able to help them with. You can make a real difference in their lives as they build confidence by achieving meaningful goals. It may be helpful if you share with them one of your goals that you are personally working on. I love that idea. Just remember that the lessons, the activities, and the goals are not the objective. They are the tools to help us all reach our real objective, to build faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and to become more like Him. The Corman Class Presidencies, with your support and mentoring, will be successful servants in the Lord's work. We are grateful for you adult leaders and for all of your efforts to serve and love the youth of the church. All of these efforts are part of one great work to help the youth bind themselves to the Savior and to keep progressing along the covenant path. Now it is time to speak to Quorum and Class Presidencies. We hope that you as their leaders and advisors will remain with us for this part of the broadcast. So let's start with the video. If you are wondering how you can help to gather Israel, let me suggest four ways. You can, one, live according to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Two, serve someone in need. And three, invite someone to receive the gospel. And four, help to unite families for eternity. I feel like as a class presidency, we're trying to look out for the girls and help bring the spirit into their lives and help them with things that we've gone through before. I feel my responsibility is to be able to pray for them because as a leader, I'm supposed to be able to uh, identify the needs and wants of my people. I have to make sure that programs and activities are organized and that we make the best out of it. I am responsible for letting the girls know what's going to happen this week or next week and if someone's going through something really hard or they just don't feel like coming to church anymore, I can talk to them and we can work through it. I mean, I feel like we're kind of all, you know, united. We care about all the young women and like we think about what we could do for each one, for each one of them. My crew. I can say we are one because me, I like talking too much. <laughs> and as a result, we talk about things 
talk about what could improve the nature of our quorum, what could help us come early to prepare the sacrament. It's important just making sure I'm a part of it, planning activities, being with the boys, just being there for them. It needs to be the youth doing it, because if not, they're not going to grow the way that they need to grow to be able to uh, survive spiritually. I have to admit, I have been looking forward to this part of the broadcast. I love talking to Corman class presidencies. I love your energy and your fresh perspective. You truly are, as the prophet said, the hope of Israel. I hope you feel how important you are to your heavenly father. He loves each of you and knows the great potential you have to bring people to the savior. That's why he's called you to lead your class in quorum. We are so impressed by the many things you're already doing. Still, you might sometimes feel like you aren't sure what to do, or maybe you do know what to do, but it feels too overwhelming. Believe me, Sister Corden and I know what it's like to receive a calling that feels overwhelming. We hope that we can provide you a little help today. You've been called and set apart by one who holds priesthood keys, and you serve with authority from God. The Lord has confidence in you. He wants you to succeed, and as you seek him, he will give you personal revelation on how you can serve in your calling. You also have adult leaders who stand ready to help. They want to see you succeed. Seek their help. In addition, the church has many resources on the Children and Youth website and the Gospel Library and Gospel Living apps that teach quorum and class presidencies about their callings. Let's get a sneak peek at one of those resources. Hey there, I'm so glad you chose to click on this video. It probably means you're a part of a young woman class presidency or ironic priesthood quorum presidency and want some help with your meetings. Am I right? My name is Isabel. And for the next couple of minutes, I will walk you through some tips and ideas on how you can get your presidency meetings running smoothly. Let's go. These meetings are for planning how to accomplish God's work, and you get to lead out in this great work. You'll discuss the needs of members of your class or quorum, plan activities, and so much more. I think that's a great idea. Think of it like an instruction manual. This is your work being done with presidency meetings, and this is your work without. Basically, your activities, Sunday meetings, and ministering visits may happen without a meeting but they're probably not going to look like or accomplish what you were hoping for. I love that video. We invite you to meet regularly as presidencies to discuss the needs of the quorum and class members and plan your work. And if it feels like you have too many things to do as a leader, remember that you really have just one thing to do. Help the people in your quorum or class to come unto Christ and stay on his covenant path. Everything else, your presidency meetings, your Sunday meetings, your activities, all help you accomplish your bigger purpose of bringing people to the Savior. One thing that might help is to look at a few ways that we do this in the children and youth program through gospel learning, service and activities, and personal development. We'll start talking about gospel learning. Gospel learning includes personal and family study you can have a significant impact in your family gospel learning. It also includes Sunday meetings and don't forget seminary. As a leader, you have a special role to help those in your quorum, in your class, participate in gospel learning. Brother Lund, what can they do to fulfill this role? Well, for starters, you should conduct and lead in your Sunday quorum or class meetings. Each Come Follow Me outline for young women and for Aaronic Priesthood Quorums has a section called Counsel Together. That part is not just sharing the good news of the week, but for you to counsel together as a class about how to further the work of salvation and exaltation by living the gospel of Jesus Christ, caring for those in need, inviting all to receive the gospel, and uniting families for eternity. When you meet as a presidency, plan who will teach in your Sunday meetings. It may be helpful to have an adult leader and a youth teach together. 
but base that on the needs and abilities of your class or core members. The most important thing as you plan and teach these lessons is to help the members of your class or quorum feel the spirit and see how the gospel applies to their daily lives. So obviously gospel learning builds faith in Jesus Christ. But did you know that your weekly activities can do that too? I don't mean that all of your activities need to be lessons from the scriptures, but never underestimate the power of gathering with other followers of Jesus Christ, whether it's to serve someone else who's in need or just to enjoy the outdoors. Lead out in planning and carrying out service and activities. We know you know how to make them fun, but start by considering the needs and interests of your quorum or class members. This will give you the best opportunity to serve and strengthen them. Ideas and inspiration will come as you look to the Lord in prayer and study. These activities matter to him because you are helping gather his sons and daughters. And that gathering isn't reserved just for those in your quorum or class. You can invite anyone. Let's look at two examples of activities planned by class or quorum presidencies. As you watch, now notice the decision they made and how they made them. I feel like as a class president, I'd see we're trying to look out for the girls and help bring the spirit into their lives and help them with things that we've gone through. Every activity starts with a need, and a lot of the girls have anxiety, and we wanted to be able to do something hard and overcome some of our fears. We needed to find someone that knew how to repel, and our leaders helped us find him. To be able to repel, we've got to have a sure foundation. You'll actually see where those anchors have been screwed into the rock, and they're fastened in there, so that when we clip into them, we're safe. To me, it represents that foundation that I should be on. And that's the Savior, and I need to be anchored into Him. We want you girls to have a lot of fun. I want you to think about trust, and not only in like the other girls with the leaders, but also in the Savior. I'm feeling stressed out and nervous. <laughs> have individual strengths and weaknesses and Heavenly Father knows what's hard for us individually and when we conquer those things he's so proud of us. Walking off the edge is so scary. <laughs> That's the scariest part and then it's okay after. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Sometimes Heavenly Father wants us to take the first step and then we have to trust ourselves and Heavenly Father that we're gonna be able to be okay. <laughs> With Christ, you have a feel of comfort. It may be scary, but he has you, and he won't let you go no matter what. It was so good to see them, to just see them succeed, and just feel so good about themselves, and see that they could do hard things and reach their goal at the same time, overcoming their fears and getting out and being more active and relating it to Christ and growing in so many different areas, all from this one activity. having a cooking competition between the boys and the girls. We have prepared banku and okra soup. We plan it together with the young men and the young men. They came up with the idea and they are doing everything for themselves by going to the market and to do all the cooking. We had a list of items that we needed um, some of the youths went to the market with one of our leaders and we purchased the things that we needed to prepare them, that dish. Not all of us know how to cook, especially me. We are all planning on going on mission. So when we go on mission, this is going to help us to prepare our food. I think it's a good activity because one, it helps us to invite others to come onto Christ. It also um, helps us to unite together. I'm adding ginger, okra, onion, and garlic to make it delicious. I'm removing the dust from the ginger. I'm removing the waste out of the fish. I'm washing the meat. I am stirring the bamboo. Every individual has something they learn from activities. 
these joint activities bring us together as a youth. We are able to plan activities to make decisions on our own. This program has really helped us a lot. It has really strengthened them and it has made them be more focused in their responsibility. The youth are now helping, even assisting the ministry work. And in the activity that they are doing today, they want their friends to come in and learn the restore gospel and also to improve their life. We didn't have a, a, like, a winner actually, but we all did great. You don't have to tell me who won. <laughs> we, <laughs> I'm sure the women won. The women won. Those were two very different activities, weren't they? But did you notice any similarities between what the presidents did? For example, in both cases, the presidencies knew something about their members that led them to choose those particular activities. I think we could also identify ways these activities help the youth grow spiritually, intellectually, physically, or socially. They also helped accomplish the Lord's work while being a lot of fun. Sometimes the hardest thing is just coming up with the first idea. We can find plenty of ideas for weekly service and activities, camps, conferences, in the Gospel Living app and online at childrenandyouth.churchofjesuschrist.org. Now let's talk about one more way we can help your quorum or class members come unto Christ. In the Children and Youth Program, we call it personal development. That just means finding ways to grow spiritually, physically, socially, and intellectually, like the Savior did when he was about your age. Set goals to improve in these areas. You are already doing this. You're working to improve in school, sports, or other skills, and you're trying to learn. The key difference in the Children Youth Program is that you're invited to involve your Heavenly Father in this process. As you seek guidance, the Spirit will guide you, not only in how you can improve, but in how you can strengthen and bless others as you grow. When I ask God, I'm almost always prompted to reach out to others. So what does this mean for you as a member of your core armor class presidency? Here are just a few thoughts. First, being a leader means setting an example for your quorum or class. So start by setting your own goals and working toward them. Next, get to know your class or quorum members. Pray for them. And pray to see them as Heavenly Father sees them. Serve them. Encourage them in their goals and offer to help. Maybe you can help them think of ideas and, or plan something that the whole class can do as a goal. There are many ways you can work and celebrate together. Remember that your purpose is to help people come unto Christ. Inspire in your quorum or class members a desire to become more like the Savior. Quorum and class presidencies, we are so grateful for your service. You'll be blessed as you serve others in the name of the Lord. We love you and have full confidence in you. We will now hear from President Ballard and Elder Cook for some closing thoughts. We are grateful to these general presidents for their wise counsel. We're also grateful for all of you, especially you young quorum and class presidencies, and all that you do to help the youth and the children of the church build their faith in Jesus Christ and follow his covenant path. We hope today's meeting provided some helpful ideas. Our desire today is that you will feel empowered and supported in your efforts to strengthen the rising generation. There are many resources to help you on the Children and Youth website, including answers to frequently asked questions about the Children and Youth program, additional videos for parents, training materials for class and quorum presidencies, and other resources. I believe I speak for myself and Elder Cook when I say that we know this program will bless the lives of children and youth who participate. Its purpose, like all church programs and resources, is to help us draw closer to the Savior so that we may return to our Heavenly Father and receive eternal life. We want to end with a video of encouragement and testimony from past events on the Children and Youth Program. Then key in a priest quorum second assistant 
will offer the closing prayer. You are the Lord's symphony. You are his battalion. This work is your purpose. It's why Heavenly Father has sent you here. At this time, it will bring you joy. Continue to be a light. Continue to move forward. As you counsel in families, wards, and stakes, when you're thinking about children and youth and the children and youth program, I know the Lord will bless you. He'll help you in every needful way. This is gonna be a tremendous, this is gonna be the most exciting youth program and child program that we've ever had in the history of the church. If we will follow these suggestions, our youth, our children, our homes, our parents, even grandparents are gonna be stronger and they're gonna draw closer to Christ. You can do this and God will help you. He wants you to succeed, your leaders, your parents, want you to succeed. From the depths of my soul, I testify that this is the work of Almighty God. He lives. Jesus is the Christ. This is His church, restored to accomplish its divine destiny, including the promised gathering of Israel. You are the hope of Israel, children of the promised day. I so testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this day and for um, the opportunity we had to um, listen to um, these, this, these thoughts today. And um, please help us to um, be able to have the Spirit with us as we um, um, use this youth program. And please guide us to be able to strengthen our testimonies in thy Son, Jesus Christ. And please help us to um, participate in the gathering of Israel and help us to find ways to serve others. And we are so grateful for thy son, Jesus Christ, and for his gospel. And we say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>